Hey everybody, this is Formidable Fabrications. I'm Jamie and today we're going to be working on a Meyer snowplow. As you can see, a customer brought me this snowplow with the pivot pin completely missing and what's left of it is stuck into the blade or into actually what they call the sector. Um, so what we're going to do is weld a new pin uh, tube in there and try and get this old pin out. Hopefully we will have to replace that tube. Uh, but in the process of looking at the whole plow itself, um, end up coming out to be a lot of issues. Um, a lot of weld jobs. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be straight. And of course his wonderful hoses that he has been running for a long time. Um, so nothing wrong with the client. I mean, this is a typical Meyer setup that's just been used a lot. So what we're gonna do is just go through the whole thing. Um, now luckily, he also had a spare blade that I'm gonna be able to take parts off of. And then I also have a buddy that's gonna sell me some um, of the uh, A-frame, what they call the A-frame this part and I can actually put that on there so he'll actually have one really good blade for his main blade and then a kind of iffy backup blade worst case scenario kind of deal so uh, let me put you on the stand and uh, let's start working on this thing all right first thing we need to do we just need to get the space frame off of the blade so we can weld back the pocket for the plow pin. Um, so in order to do that, we need to cut off essentially, uh, actually we don't even need to cut anything off right now. What we need to do is get this off of the blade, which is actually only three bolts on the springs that, um, what they call the trip springs that hold the uh, so we just need to get these bolts off and once we do that, this whole setup will fall off and then we can start working on the blade. So I've already replaced this one, working on it a little bit earlier, just kind of messing with it to see what I needed to do. So this one's already loose. piece of metal to replace this with so essentially we're just going to clean this up fit it to size and uh, while it in place once we do that we can actually cut out the little pocket that the tube sits in or we put that actually it's in right here so just some little tubes that are the right size that I ordered And these will just get welded in place along with
the washers. So at the end, it will look like that. Not that. All right, let's get to measuring and cutting. some nice cuts on it. It's loud as crap. It shoots sparks everywhere, but for this kind of stuff, it's wonderful. And I'm a real big fan of these benchmark abrasive cutting discs. Uh, I want to say they're like a dollar a piece. And I always get the five inch, they're a little bit bigger. And they sure do last a really long time. Um, I just get them right off of Amazon. So I've gotten the, the DeWalt's before from like Home Depot, but uh, for the money, these last just as long. And they also sell flat discs too. I usually get like a 40 grit flat disc to clean my welds and stuff. And uh, for the price, they're really good. Just get them off of Amazon, check it out. All right, let's get to work. So it's not arced like the rest of the plow, but the bottom of it, it kind of flattens out as it gets to the bottom. So if I put this thing in there, should uh, I don't really need a bend on it. I just need to adjust the uh, hole that I make in this for the uh, pin to go through. So essentially, once I weld this in place. Then I gotta cut a notch in here for this pin to set in so it resembles the other side. But in order to do that too, I also need to get the old pin out of this sector so I can put two fresh pins in there so I can line it up and make sure that when it is back in position that it lines up properly. So if you're not familiar with the Meyer snow plow, the whole setup is it hinges on two pins and then has the three springs that hold it to the blade. And what happens is when you are plowing the snow, and say you had a manhole cover, the snow, the plow will actually trip forward and allow you to kind of jump over it. And the springs will pull the snow plow back. So that's the whole setup. So, but it needs to be lined up perfectly so when you're at a rest position, the snow plow is sitting in the upright position at, a, at the correct angle. If it's too far forward, you are going to, not going to catch as much snow because it's going, to, it's going to want to jump over everything. And if it's too far back, you're almost digging into the asphalt and the snow is going to go over the top. So it needs to be right at the right angle. So as you're plowing, it's rolling the snow off like you see in like a typical county truck when they're driving. So, all right, back to cutting. Almost as good as stock. Almost. It's close. Good enough. In the words of the wonderful Mortsky, good enough for the girls I go with. Alright, next uh, we need to clean up around it so I can get the weld on it. No 
once we do that, we can notch it, get the pin in there, and that's the bulk of the blade. <coughs> One thing I always like to do too when I get client stuff in here, normally if there's something broken on here, chances are there's going to be a lot more stuff broken on this thing. If not broken, at least stressed. So, prime example, I'll grab the camera and show you this. This is interesting. So you have one bad pin. If you can see right in here, I don't know if you can see that very good. It's starting to crack a little bit on that one. So what I'm considering doing is just cutting that one out too and replacing it. So I know that both pins are going to be in there really good. Uh, last thing I want is somebody to come back a couple days later and say that the other pin busted. Um, so, I mean, it's you know it's not my fault that it broke, but I feel like I should at least go over the blade and check for any stress cracks while it's in here, um, just to keep downtime to a minimum. So, as a background, I used to be a landscaper about 15 years or so before I started get, before I got into welding. I used to be a landscaper and I used to do a lot of snow plowing so that's how I got into uh, doing this. I found I actually like fixing my equipment more than I like using it. So uh, yeah naturally this just kind of fell into place. I got tired of the landscape scene. Um, so much competition in my area and uh, it was just wearing on me kind of thin. I, I got tired of it, so uh, looking for something else to do. Once you're in the, the uh, self-employed life, it's almost impossible to go back to like the office scene. So I worked for other landscape companies. I worked in offices. Nothing beats being self-employed. So I had to find something else, and everybody kept bringing me their stuff to fix, all my friends, so I said, hey, you know what? Start a welding shop. Um, pretty good at it. Never had any formal certifications or anything, but um, knock on wood, I never had anything come back. And I've done hitches, I've done trailer tongues, um, I've rebuilt whole trailers, trailer axles, everything. And uh, knock on wood, everything is still holding up fine, and I, I'm, uh, I'm pretty proud of myself on that. So I started out with MIG welding, and then I moved up to stick to do, um, that's kind of more specialty to me, doing uh, quick fixes on the run, or um, just doing a lot of dirty steel where it's just too hard to clean or too much to clean all the time. You can just take a 6011 and go right over it. Um, it just makes everything so much easier. But when I'm in the shop here, I like to use MIG, clean everything up real nice, and um, really put some uh, some beautiful welds into this stuff, especially where stuff's going to be seen. Um, I know beautiful welds don't mean they're strong, but I know they're going to be strong, so I might as well make them look good. Besides, it cuts down on how much I have to grind to paint it. All right, enough yapping. Let's uh, let's get to getting this prepped. Oh, and here are the. Uh, Benchmark abrasives, 40 grit. They're the uh, zirconia discs, not the gray ones. Not the gray aluminum ones. Um, I like these. These hold up really nice. They smell weird as crap when you're using them, but they do hold up nice. And uh, I've only used a actual uh, grinding disc probably once in the past year. And uh, I don't regret not ever using them. I only use them for like taking off large amounts of steel. But short of that, I'm happy using these things all the time. Let's get this area cleaned up so we can get this other piece welded on. And I'll get this project on the road.
the next day. Um, I ended up having to cut filming short yesterday because uh, my battery in my welding helmet was dead, so that was kind of useless at that point. So anyway, we need to finish up putting this A-frame back together, welding up these pins. Um, and then we also have to weld a new ear on the A-frame that mounts into the truck. And then this part will kind of more or less be done. And then we've got to finish welding the tubes on the blade, put everything together, and that really should be just about it. So let's get to welding. Okay, so I'm back. Um, sorry I didn't get to film a lot of this. I was pulled in a lot of different directions today. But I managed to tighten everything up and get everything ready. Um, so what we did today, we replaced the hoses with brand new hoses. And we welded the pins in. And I actually had to weld a pin tube on. I actually had to replace all four. The two here and the two on the other side. And then... You had to uh, put everything back together, got everything lined up, put back together. Thing works perfectly. Um, had to put all new bolts on the top to hold the springs in place. So if you're not familiar with how the springs work, when the blade goes forward, the springs bring it back. Um, and if you notice, right in between, you can see the light in between them. And that means that they are adjusted properly. Once the light is in between them they're stretched the appropriate tension and the blade will spring back appropriately when it's done um, one of the other things i really want to mention is when replacing these they all come with grease fittings and if you can see i have thoroughly greased the crap out of this thing um, and the client is going to be notified too that he needs to keep greasing this every season maybe twice a season just so that we don't have this problem again um, so Step back here for a sec. So if you look at the plow as it sits You can see the curve of it and That's about the height of where it'll be on the truck and you want a nice curve on it So the snow rolls up in a circular motion and keeps rolling off the blade um, So when I put the new pins in I realized that the plow was tilted back too far So instead of being forward it was back so what I end up having to do is on these pieces, you can see I just added some weld on there so it would have a little bit more uh, metal to rest on and it would keep the plow tilted forward. So that about wraps it up. Um, once it's getting dark out now and once it gets light out tomorrow, we'll throw the plow on the truck and test it out make sure everything works and then I'll let the client know he can come and get it
So obviously we're on the next day. The plow's hooked up. As you see, everything works out great. Um, not a lot of play in it. So it's a nice tight setup. The only thing left to do is check the fluid, top it off, and that's it. That's one done project. All right, all that's left now is to clean up the mess I made, put everything back, and that's it. So if you like the content and uh, you thought it was helpful or you just enjoyed watching me work, uh, please like and subscribe. I have more videos coming. Um, I have uh, a full trailer rebuild that I'm doing. Um, I have a dump bed that I'm going to be working on here shortly. And, of course, we have the 66 Ford F500 videos, too, uh, which will be coming up soon. So the next video of that will be bringing the truck over and uh, start working on that and messing around. So, all right. Thank you. Like and subscribe, comment, and uh, I'll see you again.